Speaker, as we speak, Rafah, the last place where Netanyahu's regime told Palestinians to evacuate, is being invaded and innocents suffer. Our allies have warned Netanyahu not to proceed with this invasion or they will pause military exports. My constituents have been clear that they want us to do the same. The people of Israel have the support of Canada, but that does not mean supporting Netanyahu and his regime's indiscriminate war against the people of Palestine. Canada has continued calling for a ceasefire, the release of hostages, and sustained humanitarian aid, but we can be that stronger force to build a better long-term solution so that Palestinian people can live in peace, security, and dignity, coexisting with Israelis and all in the Middle East. The ongoing violence has defined generations of lives over the last 75 years. Don't they all deserve to live, live in peace, Madam Speaker? Mr. President, an immediate ceasefire is urgently needed. Hostages must be released. Rapid, safe, and unimpeded humanitarian relief must be provided to civilians. Israel should refrain from further mili military operations in Rafah, which are already bringing devastating humanitarian consequences. Canada's approach to this crisis and to this vote today is guided by three key principles. The first is that Israel has the right to exist and to defend itself in accordance with international law. Second, that the Palestinian people must be able to realize their right to self-determination. And third, that the protection of civilians everywhere, not just on both sides of this conflict, but in all conflicts everywhere, that that protection is paramount and a strict requirement under international humanitarian law. As the General Assembly has considered granting additional privileges for the Palestinian delegation at the United Nations, and recommending that the Security Council consider, reconsider full United Nations membership for Palestine, Canada has decided to abstain today. Let me explain why. We agree with confirming the enhanced participation of Palestinian representatives in the UN. And I must say personally, I have appreciated the flexibility that the Palestinian delegation has shown in finalizing this resolution. We had good, fair, frank, and detailed discussions, and I think they have produced a better resolution as a result. But we still have concerns with this resolution despite best efforts, hence our abstention. It goes too far in determining that Palestinian statehood and a right to full membership has actually, on the ground, in reality, as opposed to in aspiration, that this has actually been achieved. The other fact which we must come to grips with, that Hamas, which uh, many states, including Canada, consider to be a terrorist organization, a view that is totally confirmed by their behavior on October the 7th, it currently controls areas in Gaza, an essential part of the territory of the future state of Palestine. Hamas continues to hold hostages, has yet to lay down its arms, or end its violent opposition to the existence of Israel. All Palestinians deserve to be led by a legitimate and representative government without the participation of a terrorist organization. At the same time, the Netanyahu government has made clear in its words and in its actions that it rejects the two-state solution. Illegal settlements and settler violence in the West Bank are growing at alarming rates, often with impunity. We believe there must be continued progress towards Palestinian self-determination, and we will not and cannot afford to give up. It is clear that we must urgently rebuild a credible path to achieving the two-state solution, one that gives hope to both Palestinians and Israelis that they may live side by side in peace, security, and dignity. That process cannot delay indefinitely the creation of a Palestinian state. Canada is prepared to recognize the state of Palestine at the time that is most conducive to lasting peace, and let me make it clear, not necessarily as the last step along that path. There is still work to be done, but Canada's commitment to the two-state solution including recognition of the state of Palestine when it is appropriate, is very much there. 
We will also continue to support efforts towards peace and regional stability. We will maximize pressure on Hamas and the Iranian regime, including through sanctions. We will impose sanctions on extremist settlers. We will support strengthening the Palestinian Authority and the introduction of reforms to deliver for Palestinians. We are further committed to supporting the recovery and reconstruction of Gaza in the context of a sustainable peace. The solution also needs to be regional, and it also needs to include the full integration of Israel in the Middle East. Canada will continue working with the international community and will keep at the center of its efforts the need for long-term security guarantees for Israel, as well as the national aspirations of Palestinians. Together, we must redouble our efforts to fully realize the vision that was first articulated by the General Assembly in 1947. We owe it to the Israeli and Palestinian peoples who deserve a brighter future and a sustainable peace. Peace requires, above all, empathy. It requires an understanding of every nation's and every people's search for dignity and for recognition. Let's be very clear. There are many states which still today do not recognize the state of Israel. It has been a member nation of the United Nations since 1948. At the same time, it has taken us a long time to provide Palestinians with the recognition that they deserve to allow them to become a member of not only this organization, but of others. As I said, that work still rests to be done. But in order to do it, it is going to require a leap of faith and imagination that takes us past some of the words we've heard spoken here today. We must all understand that not all Palestinians are terrorists. And it's important for us to understand that Israelis are a people whose deep suffering, confirmed today earlier in the week with the commemoration of Yom HaShoah, deserve their place as well. Thank you, Mr. President.